Hello everybody, uh, welcome back to the channel. So today we are going to play something completely different uh, than what I've done in the past. Uh, today we are going to be playing uh, Trains 2019, uh, by far my favorite game on the internet, uh, just in, on the computer in general. Uh, I like trains, if you like trains and you're in the right place, uh, if not, that, that is no worry to me. There are plenty of other videos on the internet. So, without further ado, let's get into it. So today I'm going to be showing you uh, one of my uh, custom routes that I've dabbled around with. Uh, it is based off of the Strasburg Railroad in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Uh, if you have not been to this railroad you like trains, I highly recommend looking it up on YouTube or going to visit. That is even better. Uh, this route is originally by a person called Fired Up Trains. Uh, he does have a Discord, and he also has a YouTube channel if you just search it up. Uh, this is a heavily modified version of that route, and I will be showing it off to you, and we'll, we'll kind of go from there. Uh, there are a couple of things I want to do with it. I can show you what I've done to uh, modify it, and I can also show you what I've done to modify some of the content in there. Uh, which I think you guys will be interested in. But without further ado, let's kind of get into uh, what I've done with the route. So first off, we're going to fire up the route. So we'll let that load. Uh, if you guys like this type of com or content, please leave a comment uh, or give this uh, video a big thumbs up. Uh, not that it really helps out the channel too much at this point, but hey, everything helps. So I would greatly, greatly appreciate uh, if you would go ahead and do so. Alright, so without further ado, this is my Strasburg route. So, um, a lot has changed with this particular route. I'm still sorting out a little bit of the issues with the, the textures, but... Uh, for the most part, we're, we're there. Um, but anyway, uh, let's kind of go to over here. This is, for those of you who have never visited the railroad, this is the Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania. Uh, now, the numbers on the engines aren't exactly correct. I just kind of threw this together yesterday uh, with the engines and stuff. But uh, basically, we have everything that the museum has, plus a couple of extra ones thrown in. Uh, this, I'm going to keep this video pretty brief, uh, however, if you would like to see the full, like a f f more in-depth detail look on like what all of everything is, uh, then I will be more than happy to do so, and I probably will anyway. But, um, so yes, yeah, so this is the Railroad of Pennsylvania, Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania, rather. Uh, it's got a lot of cool stuff in it, highly recommend it. You got a lot of steam trains here. Obviously, it's centered around the uh, Pennsylvania Railroad, but uh, there is other stuff in here, too. Uh, I have gone ahead and filled out the interior of the uh, Railroad Museum of Pennsylvania with most of the engines that you would find in here. Uh, the G5, H6, E6, uh, D16, GP30, GP9... Uh, that's an E8. We got a just a regular Shea there. We got a Climax, and then we've got the E2, which is a 7002. For those of you who would like a little more history on the Strasburg Railroad, uh, this engine right here, 7002, and this engine right here, 1223, actually ran on the Strasburg, which is over here back in the 80s uh, before being retired. They were actually leased from the museum and unfortunately they needed work and uh, the museum has a very strict all original parts policy so uh, Strasbourg was unable to uh, do the proper maintenance required to keep it in uh, FRA regulations and so they were promptly retired. Um, but uh, we're just going to kind of go through the line here. Uh, we do have all the proper steam engines, so if you haven't been to the Strasbourg Railroad, this is Canadian National 89. Um, all of these engines were built right around the same time, but 18, uh, number 89 was built around 1906 uh, by the Canadian, uh, the Toronto, or yeah, Toronto Locomotive Works, or maybe it was Montreal, I forget. 
uh, built for the Grand Trunk and Western, uh, which was merged into the Canadian National. Uh, pretty much spent the whole entire life doing that kind of stuff. Was bought by F. Nelson Blount for the Steamtown USA collection, uh, which was his favorite engine. He had this engine up until about 1965, I believe it was, when he died. And it was sold to the Strasbourg Railroad very shortly after. Uh, here we've got Norfolk and Western 475. This has become a rather famous engine recently. Uh, this is the one that uh, completely uh, plowed into a backhoe earlier this year. Uh, however, this was built uh, in 1904, I believe is the date on this one. And uh, it ran on the Norfolk and Western Railway uh, up until its retirement in the 50s. Uh, it was bought by a bunch of different railroads uh, placed on display, and then it was sold to the Strasbourg Railroad in 1993. By 1996, it was up and operational here. It's been running here ever since. Uh, Grand Trunk, or I'm sorry, not Grand Trunk, Great Western, number 90, uh, has, was built for the Great Western Railway of Colorado, not of Great Britain. Uh, it ran sugar beet trains out there, uh, all exclusively freight out there until it was uh, retired in the 60s. It was bought by the Strasbourg uh, as soon as it was retired from them. Uh, they had an agreement that they would purchase it as soon as it came up for sale, and so they did, and it's been in Strasbourg ever since. Believe it or not, this engine actually was running at the same time that 7002 and 1223 were. Uh, anyway, Oh, and then, uh, yes, there's Thomas. Thomas is actually Brooklyn East Terminal District number three. I don't know when uh, it was built originally. However, it was bought by the Strasbourg in the 90s and restored to obviously look like Thomas the Tank Engine and still runs. Uh, fun fact about this engine, it is the only operational steam-powered Thomas the Tank Engine. Uh, in the Americas, so pretty cool little tidbit of information. I won't go into all the details about what all I've done to modify it. However, we've got everything here that's more or less how it would look. I did go ahead and extend out the Cagney train. Now, if you have been here, you're probably like, what the heck is that? That's not the Cagney engine. I'm aware, however, nobody has made the Cagney engine. This is actually a European two-foot gauge engine, but, you know, I actually wanted to run the Cagney, so I had to do something, so that's it. The cars, I'm pretty sure those are built-in content. However, I think they look pretty dang close to actually what's a Strasbourg, so, uh, yeah, they're there. The Cagney actually runs from right about here at the sign all the way, it used to be here. Now it actually stops right around these cones the uh, shops were expanded in 2018. Anyway, so we leave Strasbourg Yard. Uh, this is the coaling facility. This is their uh, freight terminal. Uh, and so we go down here a little bit. This is the repair line. Um, this is where a lot of stuff comes and before it goes in to be fixed. This is their new switcher they're fixing up. Uh, there is a little hint here for those of you who have been here that is indeed Strasbourg Railroad 31's tender, which may or may not be being restored right now. Uh, and for those of you who are familiar with the Strasbourg Railroad and a little bit of its history, this is a little bit of an homage to a certain Thomas the Tank Engine movie that a certain Norfolk and Western Engine was involved with back in 2001. Actually, it was filmed in 2000, but the movie didn't come out in 2001. Uh, over here, we've got the deadline. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Strasbourg, Strasbourg has a bunch of steam engines that they are currently uh, in the process of restoring. Uh, it's not just for the railroad, it's also for a bunch of other people. However, you do have the, uh, the engines here. Uh, they are not prototypical to what's actually there. However, uh, currently in trains, there is only these two for actual dead engines that are uh, available for purchase. So, 
uh, this is what I got. However, uh, 1187 is actually, well, was actually at Strasburg up until 2020 when it was sold to the Aegis Steam Roundhouse in Ohio. Uh, this is a fictional engine, however, the Strasburg does have a 460 wheel arrangement. Uh, uh, ten-wheeler there, however, it is not a Canadian national light Pacific. Uh, here we've got uh, one of my favorite routes for trains, which is the Eagle River. Uh, however, I thought it was, it's not real, however, I thought it was a really cool railroad, so I put it on this railroad to remind me of it. And here we've got just a flat car with a uh, cool little boiler. Uh, I have no idea where I found this boiler, if I'm being perfectly honest. It might be built into the game, it might not be, but I thought that that was just the, the coolest thing, so I'm like, alright, I have to add that. Alright, so, moving on down the tracks. Uh, we are going up the hill here, and we cross the Red Caboose Crossing. Uh, really cool story about this place. As you can see, I'm still working with the PBR textures. They don't play nice. Uh, however... This is the Red Caboose Hotel. Uh, you can pay a certain amount of money to rent out one of these lovely cabooses and you can sleep in a caboose for a night. Uh, if you are traveling from anywhere that's farther away, this is a great place to spend the night and ride the train on the weekends. Uh, to the best of my ability, I have tracked down every single caboose that is at the Red Caboose Hotel and I have placed it in here. I've even got some really weird ones like over here, the Lion Al Caboose. Uh, over here we got the Toy Train Museum. Uh, it's actually just a station. However, I like the little cupola thing on it better than what was there, so I actually replaced it with that. However, I'll probably look for a different building. But anyway, moving on, uh, we travel down here. We do have waving flags on here. Uh, the first difference between the other route and this route, besides everything in the yard, is that you'll notice that these actually have corn, uh, where the other ones have these really old corn spines from, I think, Trains 20... It's either 2012 or 2006, but they are ancient and they run like crap. Uh, I have a fairly decent system here. I won't go into the specs, but I will post them below. And even with my system, which is a pretty high-end one, uh, it still cripples the GPU. So I got rid of them, and I actually took the time to replace it with actual corn. For those of you wondering, these are actual individual corns. These are not splines. So it makes things a lot more, quote, fun to place, but yes, they actually place like that, just an individual corn. Uh, moving on, we're getting down here to Espen Shade Crossing, uh, pretty cool and famous uh, photography spot. Uh, right down there you got the, uh, the yard, and here you get the engines, and you can watch them climb up the grade. Down here is Cherry Crest, and this little valley here is called Groundhog Cut. Uh, pretty cool. Over there you've got the giant chicken farms. Uh, if you're ever in Lancaster County and you have uh, eggs, they probably came from here. Uh, they've got over 2,000 chickens, I think, at this point. So pretty crazy stuff. Uh, moving on, we're going through Groundhog Cut here. Uh, one of my favorite places to capture trains is looking down here. You can watch it just come up through the trees. Really, really cool to see them come up through the grotto there. Alright, so now we're at Cherry Crest. Um, I'm going to take some time to explain what this is to people that may not be familiar with uh, Strasburg Railroad. So this is Cherry Crest Adventure Farm. Uh, it is mostly known for the giant corn maze that they have during the fall every single year. Uh, if you were ever in the area around this time, I highly, highly recommend that you go and check it out. It is super, super fun. Uh, I won't go into a ton of detail with it, but basically you start out somewhere around here. You have to work your way through the maze until you find the bridge. There are other bridges, and there are little activities that you can do should you bring the kits. Uh, one of the highlights of it is that you're, you get a map, and you have to find all these puzzle pieces with the different sections of the map on it. So, uh, And they are stored in mailboxes throughout the maze. 
uh, each section has a mailbox in it and once you find the mailbox it will give you the map for that section so you can find your way through the maze using the cheat sheet. Uh, however you don't have to if you don't want they also offer speed running opportunities where they uh, give the winner a certain prize at the end of the year to see who can get through the maze the quickest. Uh, this is a little picnic area. This, In real life this is actually like a uh, apple launcher and a pumpkin drop and something else around here but uh, Trains has its limitations. Uh, one of the cooler things about Cherry Crest is up here they will always uh, put the theme up here on the hill. So uh, up here we have, I don't know if you can see it, but the hills are alive. So pretty cool. They do have a solar array up there. This is like a little amphitheater where you can watch these chickens uh, sing the chicken song and the chicken dance. But these are actually giant trampolines. Uh, this is a little tractor ride through the maze, and then we got like all the shops here with Cherry Crest. And they do have a little tiny cor uh, hay bale maze if you would like to do that instead. Uh, we get to a really cool crossing here. This is uh, Cherry Crest Crossing. Uh, the cool thing about Cherry Crest Crossing is it's a good spot to film if you're at you know the corn maze and whatnot. You see. If you're in the, the corn maze somewhere around here, you hear the engine and then you see the smoke billowing out the stack. But the cool thing is the uh, train will come down here. Uh, now on the way down, it does not stop. This is uh, Groff's Grove. Uh, trains will stop here, but they only stop on the way back. So they will come and go down the line and on their way back to the station, they will stop here. So pretty cool place to get off. There are picnic tables here. There is a couple of things that you can do here to have fun. Uh, there's a merry-go-round. A lot of a lot of stuff. Uh, not a merry-go-round, but one of those things that you you know hop on and it spin you around. Uh, but yeah, uh, you can hop off here, and there is a pathway that you can walk up here to Cherry Crest, and a lot of people will do that during the fall. Although you have to be careful, don't miss the last train of the day. It is a very long walk back to the station. That is the joke that they make. Uh, but it is true. If you uh, miss the train, that is it. You are on your own. Uh, so we're moving down here. Or we're getting to Carpenter's Crossing. Carpenter's Crossing, uh, every train will stop right about here. Uh, even though it's not modeled in this route, there are some hills over here on the horizon which cause the whistle to echo. So they will stop right here and they will do the famous ghost whistle. Uh, the story goes that there is a railroad way over yonder called the Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern. And the railroad was torn apart so quickly that steam engines were scrapped apart in place on a line. The story goes that you can still hear the ghosts of those engines that were scrapped on the line. Uh, so for those kids, uh, you sit and have to be very, very quiet. And when the whistle blows, you will hear the voice of the old Lancaster, Oxford, and Southern echo back to you. Uh, one of the coolest things, uh, in my opinion, as a kid, because I, I believed it. Uh, up here on the hill, you got a uh, cool little uh, historical note. This is uh, one of, the, I think it is the oldest graveyard uh, in Lancaster County. A lot of these graves are so old, you can't even read them anymore. That is how old they are. They are made out of old limestone, but you can do the history on them, and I believe they are from the early uh, 1900s. So that, for those of you, that is the early, like, eight, 18, like, 10, somewhere around there. That's that's how old they are. Uh, anyway, you travel down here a little bit further. You have more, you know, actual corn. You go up on this embankment, and here we pass the Pumpkinville Turnpike. So, depending on how familiar you are with the route, you may or may not get the reference I'm about to tell you. But, basically, this was, uh, in 2008 and before, this was a w old wooden trestle. Uh just this section and the the whole thing would go we need you to stand up 
as we cross this bridge so that you can relieve some of the weight on it as we go across it, you know. Because as a kid, that makes perfect sense. Obviously, as an adult, not so much, but I thought it was a really cool touch. Uh, the Pumpkinville Turnpike in real life is actually just a pathway. Uh, the farmer who lives here has uh, fields over here as well. Uh, this is his field, and that is his neighbor's field. So they have to get it through the railroad somehow, and they have a little bridge there to do so. Uh, so we go down here on the railroad more, and we get to Byler's Crossing, a very much lesser known spot on the route. However, this is actually my favorite spot to go rail fanning, because nobody ever comes down here. Probably because nobody knows how to get to it. But basically, you follow this road until it ends. Uh, I won't give it away because this is actually a private driveway and you should not just come down here uh, with no reason. But uh, you can get there from Paradise if, uh, if that means anything to you. Uh, cool spot to film on the side. You can see the train coming up from the yard and then you can see the trains coming down here and it's just a cool place to film uh, this side not so much you can barely see it it just disappears and then here you're like oh I can kind of see it and then, but yeah pretty cool place uh, something I forgot to mention with the graveyard which is uh, up there uh, it does give you a pretty good view coming down here. You can see the train from pretty far away. So if you got a good camera with a good zoom, highly recommend taking a shot from there. So we continue on down the line from Byler's Crossing, and we hit the uh, the tunnel of trees, more or less. Uh, this is at the end of the line, sort of, but we... Uh, we travel through these tunnel of trees and we end up in Paradise, Pennsylvania. Uh, the cool thing about Paradise, Pennsylvania, this is actually the um, part where the Strasburg uh, interchanges with uh, the Amtrak's Keystone Corridor. Uh, and it also interchanges with NS, which uh, that's Norfolk Southern for those of you who do not know your railroading, and it interchanges uh, with them. They have, uh, NS has trackage rights through here, uh, just like uh, Amtrak does. So, pretty cool. So, a lot of the freight uh, cars that you see over there will actually come down here and be put uh, down there by those little cars down there. Uh, over here you got this cool little park. Honestly, I love this park more than I do Groff's Grove. Uh, obviously, if I'm doing the corn maze, I'm going to get off at Groff's, but in terms of a place for train watching, this is the place to be. Uh, depending on the day, tr Am uh, Amtrak runs, I think, 10 trains uh, through here a day, each uh, five in each direction, if I'm not mistaken, and every hour you are going, at least in the summer months, you're going to see a Strasburg train. If you are lucky and come on the weekends during the summer, it's actually every half hour you get to see a train, which is pretty neat. It is, to this day, the uh, only place that you can go in North America and see a steam train that periodically that runs in regular service. But anyway, we got the uh, this the train would pull around here and then the, the steam engine would go up to about there and then come around um, and then go up to the switch over here and then come back down and connect to the train. And while that's doing that, you would have Amtrak trains that may or may not whiz by. Uh, but, so we go down here uh, this little pathway, you can get off of the train. There is a path right here that I couldn't model in trains very well. But you can get off the train if you let the conductor know. Walk down this red path and you will get into the park. That is how you eat there and that's how you rail fan. Uh, for those of you that are a little bit more savvy and know your back roads, if you have driven around here, you can actually uh, follow this road here and actually park your car uh, right about here 
and walk down if you so choose for you rail fans. Uh, one of the cooler things that I have done is for those of you who do not know, uh, Strasbourg is actually, uh, as of 2019, building a new freight yard. Uh, they were given, I think, $1.2 million uh, by the federal government to complete a yard uh, down by those uh, boxcars right there. And so the plan is to move all of the freight that is up here down to here. And since 2019, a lot of work has gone into this yard. Uh, and what's really cool is that not a lot of people have uh, taken interest in it because there hasn't been a lot of publicity on it, but uh, a lot of people think that Strasbourg just stops here, and it's crazy. Uh, I was there last week, and the progress that they have done on the yard is absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, the railroad used to come down to about there and just stop, this is what the railroad looks like as of six days ago. It legit looks like a legitimate yard now. Uh, for those of you who are unfamiliar, uh, 2019 Strasbourg brought, uh, bought this entire lump of property uh, in the hopes that they can turn it into a freight yard. Uh, for those of you who uh, uh, I said that you're unfamiliar many times, but if you're not familiar with the logistics of Strasbourg, basically NS would come, drop off cars. The cars would be taken all the way up the line to Strasbourg, somewhere up there, uh, where they would be filled or emptied onto a truck. And then the empty cars would come back here and sit here and wait for M uh NS to come and pick them up. However, uh, is specifically in the summer months, uh, when steam, when they are primarily a tourist railroad, if you can't tell by the abundance of passenger cars there. But uh, it really interferes with the logistics of the passenger trains, and obviously, since that's their bread and butter, they cannot have it interfering with that. So, the idea is to cease, more or less cease. Uh, freight operations up the railroad and essentially if you're looking at the map from this switch here is Strasbourg Freight Railroad and from this switch to the left going up here is the Strasbourg Passenger Railroad. That is the easiest way I can explain it. So if you go on YouTube and look up uh, Strasbourg Freight uh, you'll probably see the, uh, the switcher 8616 uh, they're, you know, doing, uh, 8613, my bad, uh, doing, you know, pulling cars back. If you're lucky, you'll find, you know, 475 or 90 pulling a revenue freight, which is crazy. But basically, that's going to cease to be a thing anymore. So I would say if you ever get the chance to go out and film Strasbourg when they're doing a, a steam freight operation, please do so. Now that is not to be confused with their vintage freight collection. Uh, those they do a, a lot. <laughs> There's a lot of photo freight opportunities there, but I will say that Strasbourg doesn't do anything for free. If you want to film that stuff, either you get extremely lucky and you're there when they're doing it, or you have to pay uh, to do the event, which is usually like $300 or more per ticket. Uh, depending on the event uh, and a lot of times if they have a photo opportunity down here they will block off this road and not let anybody come down so if you think that you can just get a hold of the dates and come down and crash the party I'm sorry but that is not how Strasbourg works maybe in the olden days but not anymore so your best bet is to wait at a crossing and wait for the uh, train to roll by that is the best time to film a Strasbourg Freight if you do not have $300 to pay. But yes, we got in here. This is the uh, new yard. Uh, this right here is Capital Forest Products. This is a, a lumber company that specializes in a bunch of different things. 
but they actually lease the building from Strasbourg now, since Strasbourg actually bought the whole property. And their goal is to use the railroad as their primary, primary export for products, uh, which is actually really, really cool. So Strasbourg has its biggest customer right here, and that's what this whole loading facility is. Now, when you get this route, if you do choose to download this route, uh, there, this is all custom. Uh, there's trees up to about here, and the railroad actually stops right there, if you can see my mouse, uh, right before the switch is where it stops. And then this is all trees uh, in here by those two tracks. Excuse me. Uh, but they have extended it quite a bit. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they do. All right, so for those of you who are more familiar with trains or you stumbled across this video just through looking up Strasbourg and trains, let's go into more of the uh, cool details of the route. So a lot has changed specifically with the corn splines. Uh, when you get this route, this is this is Carpenter's Crossing, if you're wondering. Carpenter's is level with this. This is all flat. You will have to take your surveyor tool and build up this a little bit to get your desired effect. Uh, and then this is also level. This, if you can see how the hill kind of gradually comes up, uh, this is level, and if you've ever taken pictures here, you cannot really park your car on the side of the road because there is this steep embankment there, so you kind of have to park on the side of the road. This doesn't actually exist there, but for aesthetics, I kept it. So I, I did kind of uh, mimic that in the the uh, game. All right, coming back down here, a crap ton of work has gone into. Uh, specifically cherry crest maze uh I c if you would like uh, please leave a comment below uh and i will explain how you go about replacing all those uh, really old nasty corn splines with individual corn uh, i will s i will warn you guys it is a process and it will take a little bit of time it is not one of those five minute fixes However, I think it is worth it. The only downside is obviously, as you can see, when you're a little bit far away, now keep in mind my graphics settings are maxed, you'll notice that a lot of the green on the corn kind of disappears and you're left with what looks like a very yellow maze. Uh, not the most noticeable thing when you're coming down the track because I, when you first get it, this is like brown. Uh, now, if it's brown, you will notice it, it terribly, but uh, if you repaint it green and you're strolling down, uh, it just kind of looks like the tassel tops, and as you're going, then it kind of renders in. So it, it's passable. It's not my favorite, but it, it uh, definitely saves my GPU from all those uh, spline rendering stuff. Uh, so that is one of the things I have done. Again, I do have to fix the PBR textures a little bit, but... We're getting there. Uh, other things that I have done. Uh, obviously, the Pensy Railroad Museum is custom. Uh, and yes, the uh, all of these cars, cabooses, are custom. Uh, I will tell you, this and this car, these Pensy cars, are available in the DLS. That's the download station if you're just new to trains. And... Most, if not all, of these cabooses are on the DLS or a website called Trains with a Z and Forge. Uh, highly recommend that website. Uh, what a fantastic website. They've got a ton of freeware stuff and a little bit of payware stuff, which, in my opinion, is worth every penny. So we'll dive into the yard here. I'll explain what's payware, what's not, where most things come from. 1187 here comes with the 1187 pack. Uh, you will get uh, a restored version and a broken or a really old rusty version. Uh, use them as you will. They come in two liveries. Uh, this is a G5 Pacific, I believe, from Canadian National. Or G2. G2 Pacific. Anyway, uh, light Pacific. Nothing really fancy about it. Uh, 
these both are K&L trains. Another fantastic uh, trains builder. However, the reason I don't recommend them over Trains Forge is because all of K&L stuff, all right, 98% of K&L stuff is payware, and so you're looking at like seven bucks for this, seven bucks for that, and it adds up quick. If you're gonna fill out Strasburg with all the K&L stuff I have, you're probably gonna spend dang close to like a hundred plus dollars just on payware. So keep that in mind. Uh, you can fill it up with other stuff from Trains Forge that looks decent, then you don't have to spend that much money. However, if you want to be prototypical, it is going to cost you quite a bit of money to fill this out. All right, all these Strasbourg cars, they come with a K&L collection. Uh, and you're probably wondering, K&L collection of what? Uh, so if you're going to get Strasbourg, the one thing that you're going to have to buy from K&L is the Canadian National uh, 89, Norfolk and Western 475, and Great Western 90. Uh, pretty easy to find on our website. You just look up KNL Strasburg, they come right up. Uh, I believe when I paid for them, I paid like 20 bucks total for them. So, pretty good value for the money. You get all this, uh, you get some of the uh, vintage freight cars. Uh, this little engine here is on the DLS. Uh, there is no sound. You will have to do some modifications in the config to get it to not have a sound. Canadian National 31, uh, again, KNL stuff. All right, so we get into the Indian Valley stuff. For those of you who don't know, this is Thomas and the Magic Railroad. Uh, in the movie, they have the Rainbow Sun, which is kind of a Shining Time Station reference. But uh, basically, this is the Rainbow Sun, which is the 475 as it appeared in 2000. Uh, I believe up until 2003 when they rebuilt it. However, uh, for the movie, they repainted it to Indian Valley. Now, this and the coaches are custom. I cannot give away the models. However, there is a way around actually helping you guys create this stuff, which I am very intrigued to share with you. Uh, basically, I cannot give away the models. However, I can give away the files that I have personally created and all you have to do is input them into the K&L model and therefore you would have this. Uh, I will have to create a separate video on settings and stuff that you have to go in and fix, but yes, you can, believe it or not, uh, make your own custom content pretty easily. Uh, in terms of historical stuff, uh, these two cars are actually the Cherry Crest car and the, uh, it's one of the other two, uh, Cherry Crest, uh, this one, and, uh, oh, they're all in this one. What is the other one? Could be Gobbler's Knob, but it's Mill Creek. That's it. Mill Creek is the other one that they use for the movie. So if you're curious, basically all you need to do is just take one of those two cars uh, and then get rid of this stuff and get rid of that and the numbers and just put Indian Valley on it. Boom, Bob's your uncle. You got it. Uh, tender, same thing. All right, so we get into here. Uh, this, pretty generic. Uh, this you can find on Trains Forge. Uh, it will come with the wrong horn and bell, so you will have to find one on the DLS that you find appropriate. Uh, just for, you know, uh, giggles, I will show you what it is. So this is the horn I have selected. I don't know if you can hear it or not, and then this is the bell. Uh, if you can't hear the bell, just forget about it. But that's the only bells that I'm going to show you off uh, in this. Uh, this is K&L content, this is Trains Forge, all of this is K&L, however there is one modified car that you will not find on here. Uh, this is Trains Forge, I know this is not the proper snowplow for Strasbourg, however, good luck finding it, it doesn't exist outside of custom, fully custom content. Uh, K&L, 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 K&L. Um, now this. 
BNO lounge car. This is a completely custom car. Uh, it is based on a KNL model. Uh, believe it or not, it is actually based off of the Western Maryland car. It is actually the Western Maryland car. Uh, however, with a bunch of modifications, so obviously you have the cool little blue windows and the Baltimore in Ohio along with the Lynn Modinger along with the 118 on the thing. And it actually even says lounge up here, but same car. Oh, and you have to replace the trucks. Uh, I don't know where the trucks came from. It's been a really long time since I've done the car, but this is the proper trucks for the car. Uh, if I can find them, I will post them, but I believe it is off of some Transforge pro product. Uh, all the rest of this hasn't really changed. Uh, we go over here. Alright, uh, DLS, 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 Transforge, DLS. Transforge, DLS, DLS, DLS. KNL Trains. KNL trains, KNL trains, KNL trains, KNL trains, KNL trains. Uh, going over here, this is one of the only KNL trains freeware. Uh, if you really want a K4 KNL, this is the new updated model. There is a old model from 2012 that is now free, so you can get yourself a free K4. So you can get that for freeware, believe it or not. Uh, this tank core uh, and a couple of the engines I'm about to show you are uh, from a company that you can no longer access anymore, but it is called Green Coast Studios. So this is Green Coast Studios. Unfortunately, their website, uh, basically, they went on to create their own game, which is uh, in, the, in development, and so they no longer make trains uh, content. But uh, if you were lucky enough to get these models while they still existed, you can actually do this. If not, I don't know of a way that you can uh, grab them. Now, uh, this is a 060. I believe this is a C6. I believe it is. Oops, wrong button. Um, pretty cool. Uh, it does have custom cabs. All the Green Coast does have custom cabs. If you're into the custom cabs, most of the KNL stuff does not. Uh, this over here is Trains Forge. Uh, this is Green Coast Studios. Don't mind the fact that you know that boxcar is just hanging out over the ledge. Uh, this is Download Station. This is built in. This is built in. That is download station. This is download station. You will have to add the trucks as a load, by the way. This is download station. This is download station, I believe. Uh, this doesn't actually exist at the Pensy Railroad Museum, but this is called the uh, P, uh, Pensy Railroad uh, C1. This was their heaviest built 080 switcher. This is uh, a stand-in for the H10 that they have on the property. And yes, it does have a custom cab. Again, it's Green Coast Studios. I cannot give away the models, and I do not know of a way for you to currently obtain the models. However, if you do, please post it in the comments below because they are just the coolest little engines. All right, so moving on to inside uh, uh, this. So this is the Tahoe. This is the uh, odd man out. So most of the stuff in here is related to Pensy Railroad history in some way, shape, or form. However, this one isn't. This is a Virginia Truckee Railroad. Now, you might be thinking, Virginia isn't too far away from Pennsylvania. Well, it's not actually from Virginia. The Virginia Truckee Railroad is actually in Nevada. Uh, the reason that this is here is because it's one of the earliest built Baldwin locomotive works. Uh, things now if I can zoom into the proper thing you can see you know Baldwin Locomotive Works this was built in 1875 so that is why it's in the Pensy Railroad Museum collection we do have the Virginia Truckee uh, car this is the oldest car that they have uh, we got 1223 this is KNL uh, we've got uh, the numbers aren't right on these but uh, this is an E6 uh, this is the thing that pulled the uh, 
what's it called? Charles Lindbergh special. When he flew across the Atlantic, this is what raced from DC to uh, New York and actually beat out a jet in terms of production. They actually produced the video on the train while speeding to New York and they beat the jet to air. Pretty cool little story. This is actually supposed to be a Conrail GP30, but I haven't reskinned it yet. I don't know where I found this. I'm not sure if it was payware or not, but it's pretty hard to find one that's this modern. If I can find it, I'll post it in the, uh, the description. However, uh, you can find older models of this, but they just really don't do it for me. Um, so I will have to reskin that. But, I, you know, Redding's a Pensy Railroad, so I'm not in a hurry for it. This is a Pensy GP9 or GP8. Uh, one of the two, I think it's a GP9 though. Uh, this is obviously a, a E8. Uh, a lot of you are like, it's a streamliner. Yes, it's a streamliner, but it, uh, you, the F units only had a uh, two uh, wheel truck or two axle truck. This has a six axle or three axle. So one, two, three. Uh, now here, this isn't the real thing, but you do have a Shea, then you do have a Climax, and then this is really the only place that I could, you know, think to put the. Uh, 7002, but yes, it's a thing. Alright, that's pretty much it. Um, moving on from Strasbourg Station here. Alright, so uh, this is KNL, this is KNL, this is KNL, this is Download Station. So these three, along with the Tidewater car, the Maryland Pennsylvania flat car, and the Strasbourg number 12 caboose, which is right there, you will get in a pack with, uh, I think, 475 if you buy that. This, like I said, is download station. You can get that for free. It's actually a stand-in for the uh, DNR GW uh, hopper car there. I have not found the proper model for that yet, but uh, it is either a New York Central or a PNLE hopper from 1912 somewhere around there if i find it i will include it in the consist but for now that's just kind of the closest thing that i can find that fits in with the strasburg theme because you know pensy even though if you look at this like built in 1964 five <laughs> so it doesn't really fit in with the whole like turn of the century thing but it doesn't matter uh, you got the Tidewater car, like I said, this all comes in the pack. Now this, the Rutland stuff, this took me a long time to find. There is a free version uh, on the DLS, however, you're in luck, because both this Rutland car and this Rutland car are actually on Trains Forge for free. So pick your copy up today, and you too can run a thing. All right, now you're probably wondering why this uh, Southern Pacific... Uh, uh, baggage car is here. This is a stand-in for the New York uh, Central, I believe they are. Baggage cars that are here. Uh, I tried and tried, can't find them, so this is just a filler in for it. And then these, these uh, baggage cars. These are a fill-in for the cocoon cars. I am currently working on editing one of the uh, coaches over here to be a cocoon car without windows and stuff. However, it is uh, currently not working, so this is a stand-in for that. Now this, you're probably like, I've never seen this there. There is a old boxcar on the deadline over here that Strasbourg will restore at some point. And if you look on their roster, on their website, this is how the boxcar would look. It is a reefer car, and it, this, if it was restored, this is how it would look. So I thought, cool, let's just add it here and run it in the vintage freight consist. So pretty cool there. Uh, the tank car, this isn't the proper tank car, but I couldn't resist when I saw that it said Great Western on it. I'm like, no way, that's the railroad that Strasburg 90 was from. So it just cemented itself in place just right there. It's old, it's rusty, it fits. Again, we got like the, the cocoon cars that, you know, are, are just there and then the two other baggage cars. Now, Strasbourg line stops right about here. Now, I actually went ahead and 
took some creative liberty. So when Strasbourg was originally chartered, it actually went and serviced this mill over here. So yes, I actually went and just extended the line just a little bit from here, which is where the thing stops about 200 feet to service the mill again. Just as kind of like an homage to the uh, OG Strasbourg. You know, it makes a cool little freight thing, a photo if you want, but uh, this isn't actually there. This doesn't exist. It's just given, you know, let's say the Strasbourg did restore it, because I do still believe they own trackage rights here. Uh, if they were going to restore it, how would they go about it? And obviously they're not going to do a grade crossing, because that's, you know, a lot of insurance uh, nonsense. But, yeah, they probably would have built a bridge, because they're not going to build a tunnel. They're not going to raise the road. They'd probably lower the road. So that would be the way that they would do it if they did it. Here you got generic shops. Uh, if you're ever there, uh, there is a thing called uh, a Choo Choo Barn, uh, which is right in this post shop here. Really, really cool place to go. They have a huge D scale layout. They even got a little tiny Strasbourg layout in there. So definitely recommend going to Choo Choo Barn if you've never been. And then these are a bunch of other shops uh, right here where the green thing is. There's a HO. It's just a train shop. They got HO, N scale, Lionel. They got they got a bunch of stuff. A little bit overpriced, but pretty cool if you go there. I don't know what this is. I believe that's Choo Choo Barn. Uh, I'm not sure what any of these are, but it's been a while, so things kind of go in and out. Uh, but yeah, it's pretty much the Strasbourg line. If you have any questions, like I was saying with the Indian Valley cars, I am able to supply you guys with the for those of you who are wondering I can supply you with the uh, uh, files for this decoration the Baltimore and Ohio thing and the Lynn Modinger along with the numbers and stuff so you can make this car given the proper tooling to do so uh, sorry about the interruptions by the way uh, now uh, that's pretty much it for the Strasbourg Railroad if you'd like to see more content like this please let me know I'd be more than happy to uh, show off the route more I might do a run through of it but this is the route as it stands right now uh, yeah, let me know. Thank you, and hope you enjoyed. Bye.